Did it start? Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marisa Mercado Pichin. I am the Deputy Director for Equitable Development with the City of Richmond. Um, I oversee the implementation of the Citywide Master Plan Richmond 300 by working across departments and with external partners to create a more equitable and sustainable city. Um, I am fortunate to have Brian Mercer on my team. Uh, he has been with the city for five years, uh, nearly five years, has a lot of experience working in the zoning team, and then has come and joined um, the my team to help implement the master plan. And this is one of his first projects that he's leading um, on the rezoning of city center. I, we also have on the call uh, on the, from the city, uh, Kevin Vonk, the director of the Department of Planning and Development Review, and Leo Manti, um, who is a new deputy director, started I think like two weeks ago um, un under Kevin working on permitting and, and special use permits and things like that. We have uh, Jacenia Revilla, who is a planner on my team, and also Emily Routman. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you guys knew who those folks were. And I am going to turn it over to Brian. Take it away. All right. Thank you, Maritza. Let me set this up. All right. So can everyone see my screen? Perfect. Yes. All right. Good evening, everyone. As Maritza said, my name is Brian Mercer. I'm a planner in the Office of Equitable Development in the Department of Planning and Development Review. And whether this is your first time with uh, attending a city center meeting, or if you were heavily involved in the city center small area plan, we're very happy to have you and listen to any feedback you have about this proposed rezoning. Just to give you a little schedule, what I'm gonna do is give a brief presentation on the city center small area plan and the history of the area and then our initial proposal uh, for this rezoning. Um, so why are we rezoning city center? The Richmond 300 master plan update um, was adopted in December of 2020. And in the master plan, the downtown core was identified as a priority growth node. And that throughout most of the master plan update, we weren't sure if there was gonna be a new Coliseum, renovating the existing Coliseum or no Coliseum. But eventually it was determined that no Coliseum would be involved. So after that was determined, the city council adopted a resolution for our PDR staff to create this city center small area plan to get the public involved and see what we can do without a Coliseum there. So this, this city uh, center small area plan was adopted this past January, January 2022. Like I mentioned, some of you may have been heavily involved in it and some of you may have not, but one of the big implementation moves, the very first one of that small area plan was to rezone city center to align with the vision that was set forth in the plan. And that included adding the residential ground floor activation and unlimited height and density. And as I'll get into uh, future slides, you'll see that the current zoning we have is pretty outdated and it doesn't align with the city center plan or the future land use in the master plan update. So here is one of the main pictures we all remember from the city center small area plan. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the vision for the city center small area plan to kind of let you know that what we're looking for. So the vision for city center is to become the engine for expanding greater Richmond's life sciences industries. City center will be the place to live, learn, collaborate, create and develop new life science businesses in a highly or high dense density, walkable, urban, full-scale service environment that includes multimodal transportation options to city and regional neighborhoods and job centers. So as you can see here, these are some of the things that we incorporate in the plan in the picture and location. And as we mentioned throughout the plan, every building doesn't necessarily have to look like what's shown here on the rendering, but this is kind of just our general idea of what we're looking at. And if you can see my mouse here, this is where the Coliseum is. So we're looking at adding the residential mixed use, the hotel entertainment, and also a lot of green space, potentially a main plaza, linear park, 
um, things of that nature, and also the educational services closer towards the VCU side. And here we're looking at the current zoning of the area, and if you see the the dashed black line here kind of shows the study area of what we're looking at for city center. So we have I-95 and 64 to the north and east, and then to the south we have East Broad Street, and then we're really looking at east uh, of North 3rd Street, so the convention center east. Um, and the majority of the zoning we have in this area is B4, but then we also have the, the Coliseum is CM, and then we have the RP, the research park, and then we have the RO3, that's residential office. And then the DCC, the downtown civic and cultural district. And as you can see here, we have a few um, city old and historic districts that are hashed out on this map as well. So here is a map of the 1942 zoning. Uh, the, uh, along the south here, this is Broad Street. We have a lot of the general business. And then when you go further up the Clay Street, you have your commercial uh, district as well. But as you can see, a lot of the, the northern part of the, the, the city center area was multifamily. It had very high density residential area that we're really looking to bring back in this plan and in this rezoning. And if you look at the, the city center plan, um, that will provide a, a much more in-depth, detailed kind of timeline of the residential population in this area. So if you haven't been able to look at that, I really encourage you to go to our website and look at the plan for the, the history and also just the plan in general. And as you can see here at the bottom right, here with the Blues Armory building, but uh, it was very, high density residential prior to the Coliseum, the downtown or the, the the convention center and the interstate. So this is kind of what we're looking to bring back here with supporting businesses. And this is, if you can see, we have an aerial view, but also we have the 1979 zoning lines. We have the study area. You can see the Coliseum. It was zoned CM at the time. It's still zoned CM now. And you have the B4 zoning, which takes up the majority of the area, but you have your RP. And as you can see from the, the current zoning map, this is very much the same as it is um, almost 40, over 40 years later. I think the only changes up here along 4th Street, some of this RO3 went into the RP. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much stayed the same for over 40 years. So that's where we have to look and see how can we rezone this area to align with all the the goals of the city center plan and the the Richmond 300 plan as a the a priority growth node? So right now, here's a chart showing the existing uses that are permitted by right. So all of the blocks that so that have a the, are green and it has a P P that means a permitted principal use in the zoning district. You can do it by right. And if there's not that PP, it means it has to get a special use permit or it's not permitted. And so I, I took a, the several uses that are either existing or what we want to incorporate in uh, the city center small area plan to let you know like what's allowed right now versus what's not allowed. So you can see the residential, it's allowed in the B4, R3, but it's not allowed in the CM and RP. And I did not include the DCC in this, which is the, the convention center, but we're not proposing any changes to that, but we'll I'll show you more about that later. Um, and then the hotels, it allows in all the districts except the RP. So one of the main things of the city center plan was bringing in a new hotel to support the convention center. And then the research facilities office um, allowed in these these old 1979 districts that were created, they didn't really want or allow for residential right around the Coliseum or in the research park area. Um, then we have some schools that are permitted in two of the districts. And right now in the RP district, the commercial, like the retail restaurant, personal service, it's only allowed when it's accessory to another permitted principal use. So if you have like a subway restaurant in one of the large laboratories, then that would be permitted, but not like a, a standalone commercial, uh, whether restaurant or other commercial uses. So this is kind of just showing you what's allowed now. 
And in addition to the uses that are allowed, we have these feature requirements in the zoning districts. Um, so we look at height, floor area ratio, and fenestration, and usable open space. So in the B4 right now, we say there's no height limit, but the one in four incline plane comes in, which I'll get into more later. But in the CM, you have an 80 foot height limit. In the RO3, there's none, but you have another incline plane. And then in the RP, it's 120 feet. And then in the CM and in the RP districts, they don't have any other requirements in regards to the floor area ratio, fenestration, usable open space. So they were very bland when they were created without these feature requirements, whereas we have some here in the B4 um, and in the RO3. So again, this is just what's existing now. And going back to the incline plane, the incline plane in the B4, it says that, that there's no height limit, but you take the center line of the abutting street and you do a rise over run. So for every one foot horizontal, you can go up four feet and you draw an incline plane to the parcel line. And here are some examples of recent buildings that were created, whether it was through VCU or the General Assembly, and as you can, or the state. And as you can see, all three of these buildings penetrate the incline plane. But since they're through VCU in the state and also federal buildings, they do not have to comply with underlying zoning. But if you've been around downtown, if you look at these buildings, you, I don't think you would say that they're completely out of um, character for the area, especially um, since you don't really abut too many residential dis or buildings at this time. But this was really just we looked at the B4 and with the uncertainty of the the widths of certain streets, this is just something that we looked at and maybe we should allow or, or bring over or maybe we should remove for the proposed rezoning. And then kind of to give a little quick definition of the floor area ratio, that's another thing that's currently in the B4, but it's not in the, the CM or the RP. And it pretty much says that it limits the amount of floor area on a lot for each uh, square foot of land area. So this is another thing that can impact height. So if you see here, if you have one large lot of um, land and you're only allowed a one to one ratio, you can either make it into one story and take up the entire lot. You could subdivide or not subdivide, you could decrease the size of the, the building uh, horizontally, but then you could go up a floor and similar to the smaller the coverage of the land, the higher up you can go. And currently in the zoning ordinance, we have floor area bonuses that encourage people to provide certain things such as dwelling uses, um, enclosed parking, improved roof areas. Those allow you to increase the floor area ratio to get that additional height if those features are included in the building plans. And then kind of going back, I briefly mentioned the Richmond 300 future land use plan. So this is different from zoning. This is what the Richmond 300 master plan uh, identified and said, this is what we want the area to look like, the, the downtown mixed use. So bringing in that more uh, mixed use residential buildings, allowing commercial by right, because right now it's, unless you're living in the VCU dormitory over there, it's really, I don't, I'm not aware of many places where you could live in this area. Uh, if you were a VCU worker or a student or even a city worker. Um, so we're kind of using the existing zoning and looking how we can change it because the zoning allows you or implies what you're allowed to do with land. Whereas in this future land use category is just what we envision the area to be. So we have, the majority of it is the downtown mixed use and then you have the, the institutional uses over by vcu and the hospital and some of uh, the city buildings over here and so when we were looking at the city center plan we looked at some few uh, some zoning considerations and i briefly mentioned some about those feature requirements but when we were looking at rezoning it, we knew we wanted to change the current B4, RP, R3, and CM to potentially a new zoning district. Um, in the, the city center plan, it talked about creating an innovation district, um, but maybe using existing zoning districts could be a possibility as well. But as I've mentioned several times here, we really just want to allow that 
residential use by right in the city center area. And the city center area specifically called out unlimited height, which sometimes it can uh, cause some concern, but obviously the, the market determines some high requirements. And as I'll show you later, we are looking at potentially keeping the, the floor area ratio. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the maybe removing the incline plane um, and then other form elements such as the fenestration. So having that ground floor activation, having windows so you can see in and see out of buildings. Because um, right now downtown or in this area after five o'clock on a Friday, it pretty much sits empty throughout the weekend other than the VCU hospital area. But uh, a lot of the parking garages, the the city buildings, the, the Coliseum has been vacant for a while, but kind of creating these form elements that will really enhance the area 24 seven. And so here are some uh, a chart that we created just to show you what we're envisioning. So we're looking at amending the instead of creating a brand new zoning district, we can kind of incorporate some of the uses that are allowed and create this or make a text amendment in the zoning ordinance to revise the research park district and then expand it throughout the area. So what we want to do is keep all of those existing uses that are there in the RP, but then add in the residential, add in the hotel, add in the, the commercial allowed by right. So this shows you everything that's there, whether it's in the B4, RO3, CM, we're looking at keeping it a permitted principal use. So that will decrease. I don't, I'm not aware of any non-conforming uses that will be created by this proposed rezoning, but that's our goal. So if we're not aware, or if there's any out there that we're not aware of, please let us know and we'd, we'd be happy to look at it. So these are the uses that we're looking to bring over, but we're also looking at adding those feature requirements that I was discussing. So this last column here, we're looking at removing the height limit and also the incline plane. Because as I mentioned, we're not potentially sure of the width of the street and we don't really want the incline plane to impact the height of the buildings, but potentially we, we could keep a floor area ratio to keep that form so we don't have an entire block, a, a, just a massive building that takes up the entire block. So maybe we have some more form-based elements in these buildings to, pro to provide that light and air that the, the incline plane was intended to do. But as I showed you with those state and VCU buildings, those are fit in well with the neighborhood, but they would not be allowed by right due to the incline plane. So that's why we want to remove the incline plane, but then potentially keep the floor area ratio. And these ones that I'm showing now, these are just recommendations. They're not set in stone. I just looked at keeping the floor area ratio. And right now in the B4, it's 6.0. So maybe we increase it by two to 8.0. Maybe when we're interested to hear if you think maybe that's too high or maybe it's too low, just any feedback would be great. But also, absolutely, we'd want to keep this fenestration requirement that's not currently in the RP but bring it in from the B4 and the RO3 as well. And then that usable open space requirement for new buildings, that's like adding balconies, rooftop decks, green space on a building, sidewalks, pretty much everything but enclosed building area and parking um, counts towards your usable open space. So that's what we're really looking to do. So our intentions are to revise the existing RP district and then expand it out, as I'll show you here in a little bit. So the, here's our proposed rezoning, same study area. The proposal is to keep the convention center as DCC, um, and then keep this little portion as RO3 as a little buffer between 2nd Street or North 2nd Street and Jackson Ward, but then to rezone everything else. So to remove the RO3, the B4, and then just expand that RP with those amendments all the way throughout the entire study area. And we thought this was a good time because as part of the Richmond 300 plan, the, one of the big moves that we look we were looking to do is to rewrite the zoning ordinance completely. So, in, in the, but obviously that's going to take a few years to develop. So rather, we thought at this time, rather than 
creating a brand new zoning district, which could take more time. We want to kind of use what we have and just expand it. So we're very interested to hear any thoughts about that, but that's kind of what we're looking at at this time. And I can come back to this slide um, if we need to have some questions and answers. But so kind of the next steps we're looking at, we have our meeting tonight and then uh, we had a resolution of intent that went before planning commission on March 7th of last month. So we've we've really used this past month and a week or so to look at these changes in the, the zoning district and changing the maps and coming up with these ideas. So we'll we'll be interested to hear your feedback about this, but then we have the to show a very similar presentation as I gave tonight to planning commission uh, next Monday and kind of hear their input as well. So then after that meeting, we're going to do some more kind of brainstorming and see like any changes that may need to be um, completed after our meeting tonight in planning commission. And then we'll come back and have another public meeting in the same setting uh, on May 11th. So by that time, we're hoping to like have a kind of proposed rezoning set in stone. So then it can go to planning commission for approval and then hopefully by city council uh, adoption in late July. So then we have that zoning in place. So then when the area gets redeveloped, we have everything in place, kind of similar to the Diamond District where we rezoned the area. So now uh, when the RFOs go out, the zoning is already there. And if something doesn't meet the zoning, then there's still the special use permit process, but at least we have the CM that allows for residential by right, because we know that is the, the biggest thing we're looking for. So between now and the next meeting, what we're really looking for is any comments you may have. Uh, we have our website here. Um, let me see. Uh, but then also my contact information that I'll give you at the end here. But so I talked about the the very first implementation move uh, of the, the city center plan. But there's also two other ones that we won't get into much tonight. That's further down the road, but just kind of give you a heads up where we're going. Um, the, the second big move was to reduce the, the municipal footprint. So right now we have City Hall and a few other city owned buildings and parking lots. We're really looking at reducing that footprint so then we can have more uh, parcels that are can be developed privately and bring more tax revenue for the city, but then also just create a better use of land in this downtown area. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking at. And then also talking about the life science industries, education. We really see this as a like innovation district, not only for the city, but really the area in the state. So we want to potentially develop a high tech school and establish the city center campus for a higher education collaboration. So as I mentioned, I will be your main point of contact for this city center rezoning. We have created a, a survey online that you can visit on our website. Um, if you don't feel comfortable asking questions in this setting, if you want to email me directly, my contact information is on the website. So you can either complete the survey, you could email me, you could both, you could call me. Um, all of the above, but our survey monkey, I do want to point out is only open till April 27th. So we have a few two weeks here to for to hear what ex exactly what everyone is thinking about this rezoning. Some things you like, some things you don't like, some things we missed, but really we just need these next two weeks to get as much input from you as we can, similar to like we did with the actual city center small area plan. We provided our um recommendations and then we received feedback and then we made changes so again everything tonight is not set in stone it's just what we kind of brainstormed over the past month um, after city planning commission approved that resolution of intent to rezone the area so that is the last slide i have so at this time i'd be open to any questions or comments Brian, can you go over to the rezoning slide where the map is this one? Yeah. yeah. And can you talk about um, the priority streets and street oriented commercial? OK, yes. So as you'll see throughout parts of the city, um, mostly 
mostly downtown and also Scott's edition, but we have these terms street oriented commercial street frontages. So when a street is designated that we don't um, allow for residential units on the ground floor, we don't allow for parking entrances along that floor, we really require um, commercial uses or other permitted uses in the zoning district to really, as I mentioned about the city center of small area plan about that ground floor activation. I think we all know Broad Street, a lot of that ground floor commercial, you have the fenestration requirements. Um, so in the city center small area plan, it kind of designated as East Clay Street as this um, ground floor activation street, but also so we're looking at, um, and if you weren't aware, we're looking at bringing East Clay back up to ground level and ha completing that street and also potentially adding a street directly north of the Coliseum. So as part of this proposed rezoning, we're going to be looking at designating certain street oriented commercial, but then we also have priority street frontages, which are designated on the official zoning map that pretty much we don't want to have a parking garage entrance along that street frontage. You can have potentially residential units along that ground floor, but we just don't want that. As you see downtown, kind of south of Broad Street, you have a lot of parking decks that take up the entire um, street frontage. And that obviously some streets will have to have that uh, parking deck along that street frontage, but when we identify these priority street frontage, we just don't want that parking entrance along that street. So that's another thing that we're going to be looking at adding in this area, which could potentially be East Lee Street or um, 7th, 9th, um, but those have not been proposed at this time. We're going to add those on uh, to the presentation uh, for the Planning Commission on Monday. Right. Um, so yeah, what questions do you all have, if any, or comments or thoughts? I was slightly unsure how many people would um, come to the meeting because this is a property that this is an area of the city that has so much um, single ownership of land. Um, and so and one of the biggest landowners in this area are actually two of them, the state and VCU um, don't have to follow zoning. Um, so, yeah. Any questions? Brian, do you want to just put your the last slide up with your information? Yeah, I closed it off so I could see if anybody had their hand raised, but uh, I'll I'll let you call on them if you if anyone calls up. Let's see here. You said the last slide here? Let's yeah. And this this presentation that I gave today is is also online on our website as well. It's titled April 13th presentation. So if I if you want to go back and look at the proposed zoning map or any of those feature charts that I presented. Um, and as I mentioned, if you have any after reviewing that further, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to ask as well or answer as well. All right, well, seeing no questions or hand raised, please know that we welcome any, if you're on the phone, you can press star six to unmute, by the way. Um, and seeing none, I'm going to say you have Brian's contact information, brian.mercer at rva.gov. If you're on the phone, that's brian.mercer at rva.gov. Um, and we look forward to connecting with you all again, um, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.